Let's say you have a card design like this. One, how do you make it responsive through auto layout? And two, how do you use modes to make it automatically adapt to the frame in which it's placed? That's exactly what I'm gonna show you today. This is more of an intermediate to advanced Figma tutorial, and it also uses the, U, the new rather UI3. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is the file that I want you to replicate within the Figma community. The link here is in the description. And off the bat, there is no auto layout applied to any of this. There's just a frame here overall. And then there's another frame over here for this list, but there's no auto layout applied to any of the individual elements. And so that's the first thing I'm going to show you here within UI3 to get this to be a more responsive reactive component essentially. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the mode stuff afterwards. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead over here to this section and I'm gonna select all three of these just by holding shift and selecting them all right here. And we're just gonna click on this button right here, which adds auto layout, all right? And right now, all this stuff is fine. And then we're gonna go ahead with that selected, hold shift and select this outer panel. So both of them are now selected and we'll add an auto layout there as well. Now, before I try to fix the, the height issue that you know that is occurring right now, we're gonna come back to that in a second. For now, I wanna create an auto layout out of this section as well and this section. But notice how these three elements um, are spaced apart differently. You know, We have these two up here, which the behavior we would want for this responsively is we want to maintain the same distance between these two elements at all times. But what about this down here? We want the learn more button to stay, to stick down to the bottom, regardless of the height of the parent element. So with that in mind, we wanna make sure that we group or restructure our auto layout correctly. Because for instance, if I take all three of these, just like I did over here and create an auto layout out of it by clicking up here, notice how it now has you know, equal separation between these elements. We don't want that. So instead, we're just gonna take these two, create an auto layout out of it. I'm not gonna worry about the settings just yet. And then I'm gonna go ahead with that selected, hold shift and select learn more and create another auto layout out of those two elements. So now these are paired up and this is on its own. Finally, this one, since it's just a picture and it's a single element, it's a frame, we don't have to worry about that. So really now within our card, we have three different elements. We have this list, we have what's called frame five, which you know, we'll just call this middle, and then thumb. So now with our card, overall card element uh, selected, or the frame right here, or no, the, the actual card, sorry, we wanna click on auto layout. Okay, now it doesn't seem like much has really changed. So what we wanna do at this point is just kinda move this around and see if there's anything reactive. No, it's actually the same exact state as it was before we added the auto layout. So that means we need to make some adjustments. So the first adjustment we'll make is right here on this panel. And in this panel, we wanna make sure that the height right here is set to fill container. Now, when we do that, watch what happens. Now we have the intended behavior that we want. Notice how it is growing and it's respecting the white space down here underneath it. Great. So let's go back to that. And one thing I don't like is the extra white space up here at the top. Now you can see this, these little elements right here. This represents your padding essentially. And if you take any one of them, you can adjust it just by left clicking and dragging up. Now additionally, it makes sense probably to center this stuff up here. And this is how you can adjust the inner elements in terms of their positioning. So, you know, we can make it go to the bottom, top, whatever. So top center will work just fine right there. All right, so that section is done. Now, if we change the height, we could see that this section, learn more, doesn't expand to it. Um, and neither does this. What's the fix for this thumb over here? Very simple, remember, go to height and change it to fill container. So now we have two of our elements that are responding exactly as we want. Next up, we have this section, and what we wanna do is 
we're going to, with this one right here, change height to fill because we want it to fill the container. This right here, notice height is hug, which is fine. So if we take our outer element, it's still not positioning it down here. So what we can do is we could change this value right here. We could change that to auto. So now if we pull it down, it stays fixed to the bottom. Very nice. All right, so now what happens, for instance, if we shrink this? Uh-oh, we're just kind of facing the same issue except on the horizontal axis. So to fix that, for width, we can come over here and just say hug contents. For the width on this one, we could say fill container. And then we could also do the same thing with this one, fill container for the thumb. So now watch this. Now, of course, this occurs, but if we get any smaller than this, we notice that it's kind of running into each other. But I wanted, before we even got to this far right here, I would change the component variant to stacking this for like a tablet and mobile, which is exactly what we're going to do. So as it stands, we're happy with this right here up until about this point, in which case we're going to change the design anyways. So now that we have that, we can take this and we can create a component. So we're gonna go over here, create component, it's that middle icon. And additionally, we're gonna create a component variant by clicking the plus icon here. All right, so now we're going places. So for this, the bottom one, this is gonna be our tablet. And we're gonna get this roughly to the width that we would want it to be, like right here, I would say maybe probably like right here. And then we're going to go ahead and select the overall you know, card right here, variant two, as it's called, we can just call this tablet. There we go. And for tablet, all we want to do is adjust this direction. Right now, there's three elements inside of it, the parent container, this auto layout, um, which is the three columns, but now we want to change it to a vertical because right now they're horizontal one two three on the horizontal axis and this one we want to be Vertical so instead of three columns. We have three rows now one two three, but it is broke. So if I drag this down Kind of looks okay here, but again when we saw this it was broke a little bit So it's mainly an issue with this middle one. So if we double click this we're going to change this from fill to hug contents. All right. And additionally, we want to change. Oh, that was the width. I'm sorry. <laughs> this wants to be, this needs to be fill. The height should be hug contents. There we go. So now we can manually adjust this white space. And that looks pretty good right there. And then additionally, we want this one to extend all the way out to the right. So we take our width and change that from hug to fill. Then we can change this element right here, just like that. And we can go ahead and fix the padding issue right here. So if we adjust this value, yeah, right there looks pretty good just to eyeball it. Okay, so now if we take the width, we could see how it's automatically maintaining this white space down here because we used hug contents. So right around here, very solid. All right, very good. So again, I would probably want this to be like, you know, right around here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna replicate this real quick and just delete that. This is our component frame right here. What we wanna do is first click anywhere out here and we're going to define some local variables in this section. So we're going to go ahead and create a variable, variable right here. And the type of variable is going to be a number. And we're going to call this width. And we're going to give it a value. So the value, we're not sure what we want that value to be yet. So to do that, we could take a look at this value or this element right here. And let's just pull over here tempor temporarily. And let's say we know that the width of our desktop frame, for instance, based on that, we want the width not to exceed, you know, maybe somewhere around, let's just say like 1600 pixels. All right. 
So let me back up a couple times and get that back in there. And what we want to do is go back here to our modes and our local variables. And we want to specify, let me zoom up for you. 1600 I said, or was it 1500? I don't remember. I don't know. But the first mode up here, this column, is, which is called a mode, we can call that desktop. Then we're going to go ahead and change this maybe to tablet. And we'll do another one for phone, for instance. All right. And so these values need to change as well. So notice, don't get confused because it looked like it was cut off. We can adjust this value. And then I'll say for the next value, for our tablet value, that should change the tablet probably around, I would say, eh, 1058. So I was looking at the width over there. So for tablet, we'll change to 1058. And then phone, let's just say for the heck of it, 400. So now that we have those defined, we can click on this first component variant, which is default, and we can tie the width right here to the variable of width. Now we could also do the same thing here. We can tie the variable to width. Now, of course, it's gonna make it look kind of crazy. Don't worry about that just yet. So now if we go to assets and we find our card component, we can drag this in right here. Now the next step is to take your frame, we say like we know this is our desktop frame, and what we wanna do is right here, appearance, you see this little icon, that's the apply variable mode. This icon will not show up if you select this frame without having this element inside of it. So if I click this, guess what? It's disappeared. All right, so why is that? It's because this element right here has applied to it from over here when we did it in this component area, it has applied to it a variable in the width column. So, so we've applied a variable to this component, therefore it unlocks this element right here where we can say, okay, this is the desktop frame, it needs to be associated with the desktop mode. Now, nothing seems to change here, but just wait a second. It's about to get more interesting. So let's just replicate this real quick. I'm going to delete this and we'll come out to, you know, a size like around here, like 1147, right? Like a, for a tablet. So I'll rename this to tablet. All right. And then I'm going to simply drag this over here. Now, nothing seems to change just yet. So we take tablet with it back in there. And that unlocks this element, and we can now change this to tablet. Oopsie. So watch what happens here. We drag it in, and it automatically changes the width of this element because it's tied to that variable. So it's also, though, not changing to the stacked version, and that's because we have to change this to tablet. Ah, there we go. That is very cool. So now if we were to drag this back over here, it's gonna stay in that mode, but it's gonna increase the width. We would just switch back to default. So hopefully you can see kind of how that works. So if I replicate this, change this back to default, there we go. We have like a really dynamic component that works very well. We could even add a auto layout on this overall frame to keep things centered up. Do the same thing here, center it up. And then same thing, this would definitely work for mobile as well, or phone. So if I change this title to phone, and we'll change the, t the collection to phone, um, and we change the width, guess what? Automatically it's changing our design in here as well. So to further emphasize or demonstrate the power of these variables, Let's say, for instance, for whatever reason, this isn't like a great use case, you probably would never do this, but let's say, for instance, we wanted to change the background color of these elements, these cards, based on whether or not they're on the phone, tablet, or desktop. So just to get you a little bit more experience, let's do that. Well, we go to local variables, we're gonna create a variable, and this time we'll do color. Now, you, obviously, we can do Boolean values and strings and all that good stuff. So color will work here. 
and we'll just call this BG underscore color. And so maybe the first color will be the default color right here, this yellow. So I'm just copying the hex color codes. Maybe the next one, let's try to choose another color here. Uh, it's gonna look like garbage because of the other stuff inside of it is, you know, <laughs> orange dill. Let's just say for the heck of it, we'll make it this color right here. Please don't ever do this. This is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, so we have that one, and then we also have this one as well. Um, actually, let's back up. I don't want to save that color code. There we go. Um, paste that back in. Okay. Then we have this one. Um, maybe we'll make this one, you know, that color. Puke worthy. Okay. So now we'll go back here, change it to that color. So now go back to the, don't do it on the instance level unless you want to, but if you want to apply to all of them, we go to our main components, the originals, and we can tie the background color to a variable BG color. All right, do the same thing with this one. Click right here, change it to BG color, and guess what? They updated automatically. So just to show you by deleting those, if I pull this back in here, automatically it's switching the color for us. We drag it over here. Oh no, it's not wanting to be placed in there. If I go to file, card, we wanna put this in the phone right there. There we go. And then of course we would switch the tablet and there you go. All right, and that is it. Definitely check out designcourse.com where I have my interactive UI UX design course where you will learn Figma and very shortly I'll be updating that to the new UI3 and I will see you all very soon. Goodbye.